You're listening to Make It Possible Ukraine Volunteer Heroes Stories, the podcast about volunteers who have made a difference in Ukraine. Together, we can make it possible for people in Ukraine. Hello, everyone. So this episode is about cultural differences with Ukraine. So I'll start the episode with reading a list of do's and don'ts in Ukrainian social culture with my comments and followed by opinion on cultural difference from five volunteers. Joe from New York, Ben from Australia, Ryan from UK, Sean from Michigan and Dennis from Netherlands. Let's start. So the list is more uh, about aspects of social culture of Ukraine, uh, so you can So it enables you to enjoy the friendship you make and avoid awkward moments. Do's and don'ts for good manners in Ukraine. So I'll start with do's. Uh, so the first one on my list is t- it says take your gloves off before shaking hands. And um, I mean, I think in general that probably is the same in all cultures I lived in. Uh, so it says when pretty much when you greet in a person, make sure to remove your gloves before shaking hands as it conveys sincerity. And that's what like men do, right? And for female, a female friends and family, they kiss each other on the cheek three times, uh, starting with the left cheek and close male friends as uh, they hug and pat each other on the back. So that's, that's, yeah, that seems like a normal thing to do in Ukraine. So make sure to remove your gloves. <laughs> uh, number two uh, of do's, uh, like good manners in Ukrainian culture. Uh, bring a gift to your hosts to express your gratitude. So I can like disagree with this one. We are like, we like to give gifts to people for reasons and no reasons, I think. Uh, yeah, so they like to, Ukrainians love to give and receive gifts when visiting each other on birthday, uh, any significant live events, and of course, New Year's. As a hint, if you're given flowers, it's the best to ensure that the number of flowers in bouquet is an odd number, like five, seven, nine, as even number are reserved for funerals. Also, avoid to give yellow flowers because yellow associated with separation and loss. And honestly, like, I don't think it's that common nowadays, but it's like a general idea. I think it's more like traditional way of looking at colors, but just something to keep in mind. And the white flowers are often given to girls and red flowers symbolize love. And yeah, and Ukrainians, Ukrainians also exchange gifts on New Year's Eve, which Like, for example, when I lived in the U.S., that's something people don't do. They do it for Christmas, but we do it on New Year's Eve and Christmas Day. I almost feel like New Year's Eve is more, like, important for gifts given than Christmas because Christmas is just, like, time spent with the family. All right, so that's on gifts. The next one is take your shoes off when you enter somebody else's house. And, I mean, yeah, that's, that is correct. And you may be offered slippers instead. So you can take the slippers or just walk barefoot. It's up to you. So that makes sense. So a couple more. I'm just going to read through all of them. And then I'll comment because they all related to uh, visiting somebody else's home. So when you visit Ukrainian friends at home, Please make sure, <laughs> if you can, of course, if you think that's the right thing to do, please praise your host's cooking skills. And number, another one is try everything and save room for seconds. So like things we eat, like salo, it's like marinated ham. And that's, we really love it here in Ukraine. And it's really, really good because we have this like farmer's market kind of like quality um, meat and obviously ham. Uh, so vareniki is always on the table. So those are dumplings with a right, variety of different fillings. And 100%, I recommend you to try that. Uh, shuba, shuba is another, another dish. And it's traditional Ukrainian. It's like hearing dish. It's hearings and mayo and beets. It's so good. It's one of my favorites. Like highly recommend you to try. And of course, borscht. Like everybody knows borscht. All right, so next advice is try to finish your food. So this shows your host that you're enjoying yourself and you're enjoying the food. So that's a good idea. Uh, also, we are also very like uh, 
we make lots of toasts and speeches when we drink or eat so that's a thing to do and ukrainians like like when you sincere in your toast or speech Sincer sincerity is very like appreciated and obviously people drink here um, and so we drink after the toast refusal can appear rude or suspicious uh, but all, of course you can politely decline it say it's because of whatever reason it is uh, but your glass might be refilled no matter if you deny it or not it's just very like cultures that we drink and we say toast and things like that and the last one that i have on my list is offer to clean up after the meal although most likely it's going to be refused but it's just nice to um, yeah just nice to offer that so what else would I want to add? I think in general that covers it all. Uh, and it's like just also going back to visiting Ukrainian friends at home and gifts, kind of like combining that things. It's a good idea. Ukrainians are generous and thoughtful hosts. They reserve their best food, drink and tableware for guests. Uh, and usually guests are not generally asked to bring any food or drink with, when visiting, but it's considered polite to bring a bottle of alcohol or cake to express your get gratitude. So I'd recommend, like for example, alcohol is usually more appropriate gift for men and flowers for women. If there are children in a household, sweet things are welcome. It's also good manners to show your appreciation by offering help, like, you know, to clean up afterwards, but we already talked after uh, about this. And going back to drinking, there is a couple toasts that are like kind of like very common. So in Ukrainian, the, uh, like cheers, we usually say uh, it's a common toast and it sounds like budmo, B-U-D-M-O, budmo. So that's what you say when you cheers to somebody in Ukraine. And the host will usually decide the order of toast, which may cover a variety of topics such as love, good luck and good health, all kind of stuff. And in the end, there is also another very like popular toast to say. It has, as it says, um, literal translation is on the horse, which we like sending people away. And in Ukrainian, it sounds na konya. Na, which is on, and konya is a horse, na konya. And it pretty much, it means on, on, one for the road or something like that so that's kind of like to toast to the journey home like some like that kind of stuff and historically it was undertaken on horseback so it came from that part at uh, the time well so that's kind of like all the uh, dues uh, when you inter like you interact with the Ukrainians when you go to their home so I hope that would be helpful and I'm just gonna go through like quickly go over the list of don'ts uh, and I think most of them are obvious and some of them might be surprising. So let's see. So number one is hand gifts. Uh, don't hand, well, handing gifts over the doorstep is considered bad luck. So this is just superstition we have. So, and Ukrainian will tell you, please don't do that. Come one way or another. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, sit in or put your feet on the table. But I think that's kind of like general majority of the cultures. Also, yawning when somebody is speaking or in public without conveying, uh, covering your mouth, which is just a good tone. Uh, start eating until everybody is sitting down on the table. So that's usually like in Ukraine, we kind of wait for everybody to settle down and then we start eating together. It's a very like, so the culture in general is like we do things together. So it's not like, I think it's opposite to individualistic culture. It's more like, okay, we as a group do everything together. We can be eating, cleaning, you name it. Um, yeah, so something to consider. I uh, refuse to try a dish. Uh, yeah, that's kind of like not the nicest thing to do, but of course that happens. So just make sure you're polite about it. But like Ukrainians would appreciate if you try everything. Um, yeah, so that would be nice. Another on don'ts um, list is uh, do not waste food, especially bread, because for us it holds historical significance in Ukraine, a symbol of well-being in prosperity. So like we never throw away bread. I mean, almost never. I'll try to give them to whatever, um, like to animals and stuff to eat. So we try not to do that because it's important for us. We went through years and hundreds of whatever, many, many, we have a history of uh, hunger in this country. So bread is important for us. So we're trying not to do it even now. 
Another one is, it says refuse to drink Horilka as a funeral meal. Um, yeah, I can see that because like you have to just drink it for whoever died. But I mean, it just really depends if you drink or not. Uh, another one is whistle indoors, consider bad luck and blow your nose in a public, which is considered rude, which I think it makes sense in every single country. So that's my list of do and don'ts. And in general, what I wanted to tell you one more time, which I already mentioned a little bit, is like be as welcoming as you can be. Because like Ukrainians, they prioritize people and conversation and they're very like relaxed and they want to talk to you. They want to spend time with you. They're very generous. They're very caring people. I think I think they're extremely warm people. And I travel everywhere too. And every time I go back home, which I'm from here, so my, um, my opinion might be subjective, but I think they're like extremely friendly people very like want to make friends and be friends with people they want people around they want you in their lives so they're very like open to um, new people so yeah hope you make lots of friends in ukraine so now we're gonna switch to listening um some a few comments on social culture and on uh, some cultural differences from our amazing volunteers who took part of our summer program this year and yeah so opinions would be just like random thoughts on ukrainians or some differences so but i think it's still interesting uh to listen to so we'll start with um sean sean from michigan and he will talk about like i i mean i listened to all this topics before so he'll talk about how friendly ukrainians people are then we'll have ben from australia talking about like dry like how crazy drivers are in ukraine which was really interesting and then uh, we have somebody talking about i'm sorry not somebody dennis dennis talking about work hard mentality and joe will talk about how people really wants to help in ukraine and we'll finish by Ryan just telling about like this, like culture, like how culture is different compared to UK and things like that. Well, enjoy listening to opinions of our amazing volunteers and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Thank you. Cultural differences between here and in the US, I guess is probably where would be more relevant than like here in Austria. Uh, cultural differences between here in the u.s uh it's honestly it it reminds me more of the u.s in in most ways again and like people being very friendly being outgoing there's certain european aspects like you like public transit is everywhere you can take public transit um i would say the most striking cultural differences are are just not even cultural they're just the way things work like because of the war because of uh, like air raids going off, which everyone kind of gets used to. Like at the first first couple air raids I heard, I was like, oh, God, what do I do? And then I just walk around the street and everyone's just kind of like going around doing their normal stuff. Uh, curfews being at midnight. Um, these aren't cultural. I don't know. I don't know. People are way friendlier here than in Austria. Let me tell you. In Austria, uh, there's this thing called like the German stare where like people will just like glare at you like 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 beaming like they're superman like trying to vision ray you down into a small melted puddle um people have like soft eyes friendly smiles here it's very reassuring um again people are just outgoing willing to talk to you if you like walk up to talk to someone in austria you're like hey how's it going they'll be like what why <laughs> and here People will talk to you about how, how it's going, how your day is doing, which reminds me a lot, again, of, of like Midwestern U.S. In Ukraine, well, actually, I can't speak for all of Ukraine. In Lviv, the driving is a lot more uh, loose than what, I've, what I'm used to in Melbourne. There's not always clear lane markings. Sometimes drivers drive like they are rally car drivers. They're like taking racing turns around corners. It's, it's all very interesting. They are. Yeah, that is totally true. When I moved back to Ukraine, I was like, those people drive like, I don't know, like very fast. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's just a, something to remember. So make sure you put your seatbelt on. <laughs> it's difficult to say because yeah, Ukraine is of course now in war, so um, the way how people act 
is of course different. There are other priorities than in the Netherlands. Um, for example, in the Netherlands, we have discussions about um, whether a specific animal is allowed to live there or in that area. And here we are talking about war, so that's a bit difficult to, to, to say. Uh, but in general, I think that the mentality of Ukraine and also from Poland is uh, like a work hard mentality. Um, really want to develop, really want to contribute. Um, and in the Netherlands, I think uh, because we live in a safe bubble for many years now, uh, people are more focused on yeah, their own work or uh, yeah, things like, as I said before, whether an animal should live there or there. Look, it, just making problems uh, for really small things, you know, and I really feel that Ukraine is um, yeah, busy with the mo most important things uh, in life. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's a mentality uh, difference I really uh, enjoy uh, to see, to observe. Uh, for example, a really good example, actually, I, something I didn't expect, totally didn't expect, was uh, when I went to Butcha and Irpin uh, this weekend, I thought like, there would be like uh, a lot of destroyed houses over there. But when we uh, drove through those uh, villages, I think I asked a driver a couple of times, they are rebuilding so much and they have, Sometimes. there are so many new apartments here. How did they do this in the last two and a half years? It's, it's, it's remarkable to see that actually the, the to two villages are look very new actually. So it's very, it was actually very hard to imagine that those stories really happened over there. Um, so I think that's something very um, common for Ukraine, uh, that they uh, really wanted to, to develop and that they have the work uh, hard mentality, uh, that they were able to, during a war, within two and a half years, uh, completely um, rebuilding those, uh, those cities. I think that's amazing. I don't know, people are more uh, I think they're more wanting to help. Like if you ask somebody on the street, like if you can communicate, like they're going to want to help you, especially if you're a foreigner. They're like, oh, it's just that inherent uh, desire to help people that are not from there. I think so. Um, something I found like everywhere I go in Eastern Europe specifically. It's very different from like Western Europe and America where it's like a little bit more like, oh, why are you talking to me? Uh, whereas over here, it's like, oh, no, if you need help, they're gonna, people are going to stop and help you. Uh, cultural differences. Cultural differences, definitely uh, compared to the UK, obviously there's a religious difference with, you know, orthodoxy and um, Christianity and Catholic Catholicism. Catholicism in the UK, yeah. So, um, you know, the churches here, they're brilliant. You see all these, especially in Kiev, golden dome churches. You have the um, Orthodox cross, which looks different. Also inside the churches... Um, the, uh, the inside's quite different too, you know, uh, these ones in Ukraine are, are often full of portraits with these beautiful gold rims and uh, they're really lovely inside. Cultural differences as well, they're not just churches, obviously the food's quite different, lots of soup here, lots of meats, uh, which we, you know, obviously like in UK food, but not quite as much as they are here. I also think, yeah, the metro stations here are absolutely brilliant, they're wonderful, seriously, the architecture's great. I, um, Kiev has the deepest metro station in the world and there's 5G at the bottom, there's reception, which I think is great, especially coming from London because uh, you go one stop on the tube and you know you have no reception. So there's lots of, lots of lovely stuff, yeah. Thank you for listening to our podcast. I hope you enjoyed our amazing volunteer story as much as I did. I truly hope it inspires you to volunteer in Ukraine. We need as much help as we can get and every effort counts. Check out our Instagram, Make It Possible Ukraine, and our website, makeitpossibleua.org, for information on our current and future programs. If you can, please support our future initiatives financially by donating on our website. Your contribution will help us continue to bring smiles to more kids in Ukraine. Thank you so much and see you in the next episode.